Hey folks, how's it going? This is Mr. Moray coming to you with a little bit of a video on arithmetic sequences. Um, I'm going to actually call this an arithmetic sequences recap. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, in this video, I'm going to be recapping skills that we've done in the past. Okay, so in the 2019 2020 school year, we covered this in unit two. And arithmetic sequences were kind of like a precursor or like a preview to linear functions because what we did is we wrote rules that modeled the arithmetic sequences and what we found out was that one of the types of the rules called the explicit rule was actually a linear function okay and in my classes we learned mostly how to write it in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b all right and so in this video we'll look at one what arithmetic sequences are We'll talk briefly about explicit and recursive rules, and then we're going to have an opportunity to see them in action. Okay, and so in this video, I'm going to have a few of what I call I, I do's or I tries where I'm going to do them out. There will do some we do's or we tries where basically I will pause the video, or not pause the video, I will work through the video, and then throughout the video, I'll kind of leave opportunities for you to chime in. Okay, to, to see if you can understand what's going on. And then I'm going to do some you do's or you tries where I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try to answer some questions and then unpause and I will, you know, kind of do them for you. Okay, so what arithmetic sequences are, are there sequences, meaning they're numbers in a particular order. Okay, so it's a, it's a list of numbers as you can see here. And in an arithmetic sequence, right, those numbers are always going up or down by a constant value, okay? Now, later in the year, we will talk about geometric sequences, okay, and those have to do with multiplication. Here, we're working with addition. So in this sequence, this is an arithmetic sequence, and we can see that we're going up by two from term to term, all right? And I think as I might have just mentioned a little bit ago, arithmetic sequences can go up or they can go down. So in this sequence, we're going down by four as we go from term to term. What we go down, up or down by is called the common difference, D -E, difference, all right? And we use the letter D because difference starts with D to refer to the common difference. So here we say the difference is equal to two. And when I see a positive number, that means up, going up. Here, I'll say the difference is equal to negative four. And when I see a negative, that means I'm going down. Okay, so positive means going up, negative means going down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off just by discussing explicit and recursive rules, okay? So an explicit rule is cool because it tells us how to get directly to a particular term if we know the term number, okay? So here, if you look at this example, I have the example 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. So these are the terms, these numbers. The term numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, okay? So that means term one is one, term two is eight, term three is 15, term four is 22, term five is 29, and so on, okay? That's what those little ellipses mean, right? It's just gonna, like arrows on a graph, it just continues to go up by the same amount. So the pros, or down I suppose, so the pros of an explicit rule. What's cool about explicit rules are that you can jump to any term I want, right? So if I wanna know term 100, I plug it into the explicit rule, I plug 100 in, boom, I'm at term 100. So example, down here, right, my explicit rule is 7n minus 6. So if I plug in 100, I get 700 minus 6, which is 694. So without even caring about any of the numbers in between, I know that term 100 is 694, right, just from plugging in. And that's cool because maybe I don't want to know about, maybe I don't care about what's term three or, or rather what's term 13 or term 29 or term 56. I don't care about that. I just want to skip to term 100. And what's cool is that the explicit rule allows me to do it. Okay. And so in my opinion, it's also easier, more intuitive to plug in, right? If I want term 100, I just plug in 100 for N and I know what term 100 is. There's no like figuring out last terms, anything like that. And also, it's great for finding a term far down the list. So maybe, like I said, I want to skip from term five 
all the way da -da 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 -da, to term 100. And thanks to this rule, I can just easily get 694, okay? Con is it's, I think they're harder to write because they require a little bit more thinking. Um, you know, some people are taught this method with the n minus one method. These are actually equivalent. Some people are taught the n minus one method. And so the thing is, a lot of the same people are coming to me saying, you know, Mr. Moranek, I don't remember how to write this. So that's the problem is like, yeah, you have this little like shortcut to getting it, but a lot of people don't remember that. And so in my opinion, personally, relative to explicit or relative recursive rules, these are harder to write. When we get into geometric sequences, you're going to also see they're harder to write because with an explicit rule, there's a whole new different type of function, right? These are linear, like y equals mx plus b. These are linear functions, okay? When we talk about geometric, it's going to be a whole new type of function. It's going to be an exponential function. So these rules that you see here aren't going to work. But with an, a recursive rule, all you're doing is changing addition to multiplication. All right, so you're just tweaking up basically one sign and everything else more or less stays the same. So that's why I'd say this is harder to write, okay? So on the other hand, we have a recursive rule. So a recursive rule tells us how to get directly to a particular term if we know the term before it, okay? So the word directly is actually pretty deceiving in a sense because that's a big if. So to get any rule, any term using a recursive rule, I have to know the one that came before it. If I want to know term 10, I have to know term 9. If I want to know term 15, I have to know term 14. If I want to know term 397, I have to know term 396. Okay. So here's the thing with a recursive rule, they can be easier to write. In my opinion, I'm going to argue that if you understand them, I believe they're easier to write. And again, that's my opinion. You're welcome to disagree. I also think they're great for finding a term if you know the previous term. So for example, my, let's say I know term 396. To get 397 or 398, I would have to plug those respective numbers, right? If I want to know, let's say I know term 397. I know it's, I don't know, 500. I know the common difference is 13, right? If I want to know, that's term 396. If I want to know term 398, add five, add five, done. But if I have an explicit rule, I got to plug in 398. And that's going to be a lot harder than just adding the common difference a couple times. So that's why the recursive rule is good. If I want to know maybe one, two terms down the line. But I think a recursive rule is bad if, in the sense that it can sometimes be less intuitive to write. And I only say that because of this n minus one notation. Sometimes we forget this, and that's an inescapable part of a recursive rule. There's really only one way to write it. Whereas with the, and, and now look, these are just different notations. This is f of n function and sequence notation. I'm putting these here because on SAT or an MCAS or test, you could see them show up in multiple ways, but the notation, the idea that you can either write it like this or like this for getting the different like function versus a sub n notation, you have options here. Okay. In a recursive rule, generally speaking, you don't have options. Okay. You have to write it F one N is N minus one. There's no, there's no, or see, there's no, or there's no flexibility there. So that's why I say it's less intuitive. It's not good for finding terms far down the list. So if I know term, this is term five. I want to know term a hundred right here, plug in a hundred done here. All right. Well, I can't get a hundred cause I don't know 99, right? Term a hundred is term 99 plus seven, but I don't know that. So now I need term 98, but I don't know that. So I need term 97, but I don't know that. So I need term 96. I have to know all the way down to term five to then go and fill those in. Now that's good if you're a computer and we really see these recursive rules often in computer science, they actually perform a really lot of nice, beautiful programming functions that a computer will like boom, 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 get. But we're not computers, so from a computational perspective, that could be a challenge. Also, they're more difficult to plug into because the biggest mistake that I see is people pretending like this is a number. So they write, oh, f of 2 equals 1 plus 7. They don't remember that you're actually plugging in 2 
this turns into f of one and then it becomes that so here's what i mean if i want to know f of two right it's so a lot of people are like oh it's one plus seven now in this case you would be right but only by coincidence because term one is one what it's saying is go back to term one and add seven and term one is one so it's one plus seven which is eight okay and then so to find term three it would be term two plus seven right and now that i know term two i know term two is eight so it'd be eight plus seven which is 15 right and then so on so this would be this plus seven right but notice if i want to know this term right here i can't because i don't know this one with an explicit rule if i want to know this is what three four five six seven eight if i want to turn if i have this rule you just plug it in 56 minus 6 i believe that would be 50. okay here i'd have to add 7 43 i'd have to have 7 i get 50. so that is a challenge okay so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to jump into my first example this is an i do problem and in this problem i'm going to show you how to write the explicit and the recursive rule okay so I'm going to start by just making a little squiggly line down the middle. So I'm going to do my explicit rule on this side, my recursive rule on this side. So let's analyze this sequence. The first thing you want to know is this. If I give you an arithmetic sequence, you better believe it's going to have a common difference. If it doesn't, why are we here? So what's cool about these is it doesn't matter which terms you look to to do the common difference. So if you know that three, you know the common difference here between three and 12 is nine, that's good. Maybe though, if you think to look down the line, well, I can more easily see that 30 and 39 is also a difference of nine. So that's what's cool. You can literally look to any two terms, consecutive terms, one after another to find the common difference. So here I know the difference is nine and I know that the first term is three and that's really all I need to know. So remember in a graph, we have the common difference, right? As well. And that's represented by the slope. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. First, let's start by doing it in slope intercept form. So I know the slope is nine because that is the common difference. Now I need to find what goes here. So, think about it like this okay this is term one this is term two this is term three this is term four this is term five and so on when i plug in one what needs to come out is three okay so let's say, say i don't know what this is it's b but what i know is that if i plug in term one what i need to get is three and so if i solve this what I get is negative six equals B. Now, maybe you saw that. Maybe you saw in your head. Well, look, I got to nine. I need to get back to three. That needs to be negative six. That's cool. So then we'd write this F of N equals nine N minus six or plus negative six. You could also write it as A sub N equals nine N minus six. Again, just two different notations. The other way you could write it is this. You could write f of n equals the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Now, it seems easier, but the challenge is that I've seen year after year is no one seems to remember this strategy. So, like, if you can remember it, fine, but one, not a lot of people can remember that. So, and two, it to me is less obvious. Why does it work? Okay. Why does it work? Why it works is because you have n minus one. You're offsetting all the terms by one. And actually, this is really what it is, is slope intercept form, right? If we think about this as y, well, what it is is y minus three equals nine n minus one. Wow, point slope form. And what we know is term one is three. Term one is three. So that to me is really the only useful way that i see it personally and you guys again you're welcome to disagree with me that's the only way i see it being useful as it does have like a nice precursor to um point slope form again that's my opinion okay explicit a recursive rule only one way to do it 
So I write f of 1 equals 3, and then I write f of n equals f of n minus 1. Now, I add, what's the difference? 9. Now, here's the thing you need to know. I'm going to write this in blue. I've written this on the board in my class a few times. Okay. F of n minus 1 plus blah. Okay. This is how every single recursive rule for an arithmetic sequence looks like. The only thing that changes are what's in here because the first term is obviously not going to always be three and what's in here because the difference is not always going to be nine. Okay. And so, like I said, when we get to geometric sequences, we're just going to replace this plus with the times and we're done. So that's why another advantage of recursive is it's easily transferable such that when we get to geometric, we're just switching a sign, but the idea remains the same. Okay. So here again, I'll just highlight this. We have our explicit rule. Oop, I don't like that. I do not like that. My friends, let's try that again. Explicit recursive. Okay. So please go ahead and make sure you understand what I did here. And then in a moment I will move on. Alrighty, moving on down the line, I've got another one, okay? So what you can see is this one's a little bit more challenging for two reasons. One, uh, the numbers are bigger, and two, it's not going up. And I think one thing we might be able to agree on is I would rather deal with positive numbers than negative numbers, but, right, as you know, it doesn't always work out that way, okay? So if we take a look here, we know we're going down. How do I know that? Well, the numbers are clearly getting smaller. What is the difference? So the difference, what am I going up or down by? Well, I'm actually going to skip to these two terms because the thing is, I don't, uh, this is a lot to deal with. But think about it like this. First of all, I know that from 101 to 70, I'm going down by 31. Okay, if you don't know that, here's a, a little rule you can do. You could always do what's called next minus now. So you choose a term, you subtract the term before it. So let's see what happens. I could do 70 minus 101, negative 31. Okay, and if you have access to a calculator, you can do that. First term is 163. Okay, explicit, let's go. So two ways to write it. First, I'm gonna do the y equals mx plus b. So we have negative 31n. Now, if, again, recall term one, term two, term three, term four. If I plug in one, I need to get 163, right? So 163 is equal to negative 31 plus b. How do I get b alone? You just add 31 to both sides. You get 194. So f of n equals negative 31n plus 194. Here's another way you could figure that out. If I'm going, I'm just going to erase next minus now so I can show us this. This is essentially what I'd call the y intercept, right? This is the y intercept, or in other words, term zero and I put that in parentheses in, in quotes rather because there is no real term zero there's it's just like a, a like an idea so look if I'm going down by 31 to the right well, what am I doing to the left to the left I'm going up by 31 okay so that's another way you can do it you can backtrack by one you can get to term zero term zero is 194 now you have your M and your B, you put it together. And my, for me, my students, you should be able to see, to identify both forms, the N and the N minus, the N minus one and the N, but this, this is equivalent. So I'm going to take this as an answer. Okay. Also, I'll write, you could also write this as negative uh, 31 N plus 194 with the A of N notation. That is also correct. Okay. Method two with the N minus one notation, I'll just write it in function notation. Okay. So we have term one. Okay, here I need to insert a minus because I'm going down and I'm good. Okay, recursive. 
Okay, so again, term one equals 163. To get to every other term, you go back to the last one, and you could either write, you could write plus negative 31. I would accept that. It's mathematically equivalent. I'm going to write minus 31. But if you wrote plus negative 31, they mean the same thing. So I would accept that as an answer. Okay. So please go ahead and make sure you understood what I did here. Okay. And then in a second, I am going to move on to the next uh, problem. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do a we do, and in the we do, I'm gonna ask you for a little bit more input so that it feels like we're doing this together, okay? So the first thing I want to identify is what? It is the common difference, okay? So I need to know, and I'm gonna, again, label the term numbers. I encourage you to do the same, term one, term two, term three, term four, term five, and so on, okay? So I need to find the common difference. That's the first thing I need to do. Okay, and if you said the other answer that I'm looking for, I'll, I'll get there as well, okay? Because there's another thing you could have said, and that'll be the second thing, okay? So don't feel like you were wrong there. So the common difference. Now, is this going up or is this going down? This is going down. So my difference should be a negative number. What am I going down by? Well. I could do my calculator, I could do 79 minus 90, or I could look, to get from 90 to 79, how much do I have to go down by? I go down by 11. Now, second thing we need to find is the first term. So the first term is 90, okay? Now, let's do our explicit rule. So, explicit rule first, So, f of n equals, so here's my slope, negative 11n plus b. I don't know what b is yet, but here's what I know. If I plug in 1, I need to get negative 90. If I plug in 1, sorry, if I plug in 1, I need to get 90 because term 1 is 90. So, either think in your head, what is the answer? Negative 11 plus what is 90? Or how would I make this look? Okay, the answer is going to be 101, and I'll show you why. 90 equals, so this is what this means in context, right? If I plug in term 1, what I need to get is 90, right? This is an ordered pair that goes together, okay? So what does that mean? So that means, well, 90 equals negative 11 plus B. I solve that by adding. So 101 equals B. So my final rule is F of N equals negative 11N plus 101. Now remember, the other way we can do it, I'm just gonna see if I can move this over here. Um, it's not going to let me only get one. Darn. Here's what I'll do. There we go. Talk about getting creative. All right. Other thing we can do is think about it like this. I'm going down by 11. So to go to the left, I'd be going up by 11. And if I go up by 11, I get term zero, which is 101. So it's the other way you could have found 101. Okay. I'll quickly just write for you the other way to do it. All right. So the other way we could do it is f of n equals the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Okay. If you again write plus, so here's another way you could write it. 90 plus negative 11 times n minus 1. It's not the nicest, it's not the cleanest looking one, but it's not wrong. I would accept that as an answer as well. Mathematically, it is valid. Okay, now time for recursive. So, remember, how do we start this rule? What's the first thing we need to write? The first thing we need to write is the first term, and that is 90. The second thing we need to do is write what? F 
of n equals, remember what goes here, f of n minus 1 and then minus 11. So again, what does this mean? It means the first term is 90. Okay, that's what this means. Every other term is the previous term minus 11. And I'll show you how where that comes from, okay? So this we can see, first one is 90 equals 90, right? Is is equals. Every other term is, is, the, is, is the equals. The previous term, okay? minus 11 okay so you got to think about it from multiple perspectives all right so again please make sure you understand what i did in this in this problem okay and then in a moment i'll move on to the next one all righty so on to the next one here's another sequence for us to do okay so i'm going to go a little bit faster now so the first thing we the first two things we need to find are what they are the common difference and the first term. So the common difference, let's see if we can do this. The common difference, I'm gonna to go to my calculator. What am I gonna type in my calculator? 43 minus 24, 19, meaning which number is 19? It's the difference, and term one, 24. Again, I encourage you to always write your term numbers underneath or above. That will help you in more ways than you can imagine. Okay, so now, here we go, explicit rule first. So f of n equals 19n plus b. So if I plug in one, I need to get 24. Well, if I plug in one, 19 times one is 19, right? What do I need to add to 19 to get 24? It is five. So F of N equals 19 N plus five. Method one. Method two, F of N equals, what's the first term? It is nine, uh, no, it is 24 plus the common difference times n minus one. Again, these are equivalent. How do I know? If I distribute 19n, negative 19 plus 24 is five. So you can actually distribute and combine like terms and you'll actually see that those two things are equivalent to each other. And that is why I'd accept either one. They're both mathematically equivalent rules so you do whichever is easiest for you. But I'm thinking long-term understanding. In my opinion, the MX plus B is better. Again, that's my opinion, and you're welcome to disagree. All right, recursive. So remember, what do I write first? It's F of 1 equals, and it is 24. Then I write F of N equals F of N minus 1 plus... 19 okay so that's our, ne our next sequence please make sure you understood where the heck this stuff comes from okay really important for you to know where this comes from just take a second and pause if needed rewind if needed and then in a moment i will move on all righty so it's your turn 
So here's what I want you to do. Here's my sequence. I have 11, 30, 49, 68. Take a moment. I want you to pause the video. When you pause the video, here's what I want to know. Oh, all right. My computer started to give me a little bit of hard time there. Hopefully that's not a sign of bad things to come. I want you to pause the video. I want to know the explicit rule and I want to know the recursive rule. And in doing this, you're going to need to know the difference and the first term okay so please pause the video find out this information and then when you're ready unpause and I will show you how to solve this all right here we go so what we have is this again this is term one two three four blah 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 okay I know that if we look here, I can choose any two terms we want. Doesn't matter. I like terms that end in zero because when I have the zero in the ones place or really in any place, the more zeros you have, the easier subtraction actually is going to be or addition, right? Those two are closely related. So I see a 30 and a 49. Okay. And remember the difference is the same. So it doesn't matter which difference I do. So I'm going to choose 30 and 49 because I can see when I do that, that my difference, and I'm going to write this in red so it's a little bit easier to discern, is 19. All right. And again, if you did 30 minus 11, if you saw 30 minus 11 was 19, that's cool. You just do what's easiest for you. Okay. Now I get the first term. I can see that by inspection. The first term in the sequence is 11. All right. And now I need my explicit and my recursive rules. All right. So uh, here's what I'm going to notice. I'm going to come over here. I can notice a couple things. All right. Let's say I want to find term quote unquote zero. Well, look, I'm going up by 19 to go this way. So what am I doing to go this way? Well, I'm going down by 19. And if I use my calculator, look at that. Easy to figure out with a calc. Or you can do 11. You should be able to do 11 minus 19 on paper in your head. That's negative eight. So that might be helpful. Okay. So what I get is I get F of N equals 11 N minus eight. That's one way to do it. Other way to do it. If you're someone, Oh, not 11 N 19 N minus eight. Let me just erase that for clarity. Okay. 19 because 11 is the first term, not the common difference. Other way to do it. You could do f of n. Let's say you needed to take another approach. 19n plus b. I plug in 1. So I know that 11 okay, is equal to 19 times 1 plus b. Okay, Which means, and I'll go all to black on this, 11 equals 19 plus b. Okay, I get B alone by subtracting 19, and we can see that I've already done that on my calculator. So B equals negative 8. So therefore, F of N equals 19N minus 8. Um, by the way, those who might have been wondering, yes, you must use N. This is a sequence. N represents the term number, and F of N represents the term value. And I've gotten kind of lazy with the A of N. So just be aware, this is what it would look like. A of N equals 19N minus 8. Same rule, just different notation. Okay. Other way you could have written it, if you're a fan of the N minus 1 stuff, right? you'd write F of N equals first term 11 plus 19N minus 1. And again, if I distribute, I would get um, the same thing. 19N minus 19 and minus 19 plus 11 is minus 8. So they're all equivalent. You can do either one okay you only need to do one of these rules but again I'm just showing you each one all right recursive rule only one way to do it first first term is 11 every other term is the term right before it plus the common difference of 19 okay so again please make sure you understood what I did in this you do or you try and then when you're ready I'm gonna move on to the last one 
All right, very last one, and thank you so much for sticking through this. I know we're almost at the 38 min 35 minute mark at this point, so um, here's my last problem for you to try. So again, um, we have a sequence right here, okay? What I need you to do, I, I'm not gonna give you quite as much structure on this, but I need the same two things in the end. I need an explicit rule, I need a recursive rule, and you need to figure out not only how do I write them, but what other information did I maybe not write here that you're also going to probably have to know to figure this out? And things that you have to know and things that you ought to know because there's both. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, try to give me the explicit and the recursive rule, and then when you're ready, unpause and I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, wow, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna again spell this out. Uh, so basically the two things, the thing we ought to know. So you might have heard me reference things you ought to or should know. So things you probably ought to know, well this is term one, two, three, and four. So the term numbers you ought to know, you don't have to have that written down, but I think it does help you to have it written down. Things you need to know, because you can't really do it without it. You need the common difference and you need the first term. So the common difference is going to be a negative number, and I know that because I can see that it's going down. 12, and then to negative 15, to negative 42, to negative 69. Now, here there's no easy way to do this. Um, the only way I can think of is you could do negative 42 minus negative 15. I like the 12 and the minus 15. It's kind of up to you. you again, you just need to choose any term, the term right after it and figure out the difference. So I know that to get from 12 to negative 15, I have to go down by 27, okay? And again, if you wanted to know how I got that, negative 15, you'd subtract, take negative 15, you'd minus 12, and you'd say, hey, what's the difference? What do I need to do to get there? It's negative 27, okay? More straightforward, the first term we can see just by looking is 12. All right, so now I'm gonna use that to write the explicit rule. And again, I'm gonna write it all three ways. You only need to have it one way, but you should be able to recognize all three ways. Or rather, two different ways, but I'm gonna do um, three different ways to how to find it, okay? So, here we go. First, the where you intuitively try to find term zero. So if I'm going down by 27 each time I go to the right, I'm going up by 27 each time I go to the left. And so if I'm going up 27 from 12, well, now I'm at 39, okay? And if you do it that way, you get f of n equals negative 27n plus 39. I can verify that if I plug in 0, I get negative, I get 39. If I plug in 1, I get negative 27 times 1, which is negative 27, plus 39, which is 12. If I plugged in 2, I'd get negative 54. And if I was to, on my calculator, add not negative 55, negative 54 plus 39. Lo and behold, I get negative 15. So you always do want to check your work and make sure you are getting the expected numbers. So that's one way to write it, method one. Same way to write it, method two. So I know that, um, well, I could write it like this. So I know that f of one is equal because let's say I didn't have the 39 there is equal to 12 okay which is equal to negative 27 times 1 plus 39 okay so that means it's 12 up oh, and I actually don't know I actually don't know that's 39 sorry in this case it would be plus B I haven't solved for that last number so I'd be like all right well, look, what do I need to add to negative 27 to get 12? Well, if I add 27 on both sides, because it's a negative, what I get is 39, okay? Or if it was one where you could just think it out without having to solve, you can do that as well. If you get the right answer, that's okay with me. All right, so f of n equals negative 27n. I bring down the b plus 39, okay? So this is method one to write the explicit rule. The way I prefer to do it, two different ways. Other way to write it, this is the uh, n minus 1 notation. So I'd have uh, the first term, which is 12, right, minus 27 times n minus 1. Or you could write it like this, plus negative 27 times n minus 1. 
okay don't forget there are a of n versions a of n equals negative 27 n plus 39 same thing different notation a of n equals 12 i'm just i just want to make sure i show this to you so you have exposure because i'm going to tell you this shows up on the mcas i've seen it and i've seen it on the sats and the psats as well and ap's and college exams as well okay all right recursive rule okay recursive rule more straightforward in the sense that only one way to do it first term 12 every other term take the term before it and you subtract 27 or add negative 27 i would take either answer and that is the recursive version okay so folks just to quickly sum up in this video what did we do we talked about one what are arithmetic sequences and what's the important vocabulary to know? And remember, an arithmetic sequence is a, is a sequence that goes up or down by the same number. Okay, we call that number the common difference, which we symbolize with the letter D. Okay, we talked about what's an explicit and a recursive rule, and we talked about some of the pros and cons. Um, and we have the explicit, which lets us just jump directly in. So in this context, let's say I want to know term 100. If I want to know term 100, here's an example of where this would be easier. If I want to know term 100, I'm just literally doing negative 27 times 100, because I know the rule works, plus 39. This is not an obvious answer. So here's the deal. If I want to know that with the recursive rule, I'd have to take 60, negative 69, subtract 27, subtract, that'd be 5, subtract 27, now I'm at 6, subtract 27, now I'm at 7, subtract, because I don't know terms 5 through 99. So I would have to get those, and then when I got to, you know, negative 20, whatever this is that I have here, um, term 99, I would just have to subtract 27 one last time, you know, finally, and get negative 2661. So we can see, as this is an example, really, really, really tough to figure out term 100. That's why we would want to have an explicit rule here. Okay. So again, we talked about explicit ones that let me jump really far down and can be modeled by a linear function. Okay. That was our warmth linear functions. And then recursive rules, which help us just get from one term to another. They're a little bit easier and more intuitive to write if you can remember the notation. You just do the first term, the common difference, right? Look how, about, look how much less work I did here. Just the first term, this rule, the common difference. And again, when we get to um, geometric sequences, we're going to see that this minus or plus, just going to replace it by a times or a division. It's literally that straightforward. The first term in this, almost the exact same idea except a different operation so a little bit more straightforward to write a little bit less doing this step to it okay a little bit less to remember long term but a little bit less practical okay so you got to balance that as well so i hope you found this video to be informational i hope that it helped you um, get a better sense of what's going on here please keep the questions coming all right keep working at it and don't forget you can do it all right, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to love math.